Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week we're looking at how to airbrush grass when the colours just look wrong. So this week we're looking at the thorny problem of what do you do when your grass just looks a bit meh? It's not quite there. And what I've got on my layout at the moment is a set at the back of my um, yard, which is covered in cinders and very black looking, of static grass, which is quite yellow, and then um, sort of a matte grass that was actually dead, and then I sprayed green. And the whole look just doesn't match to the new green grass that I put on behind. And you can see it doesn't even match to itself. It looks awful. So what I'm trying to do is match the green that's behind and also make it look like it ties in so it doesn't look like seas of yellow with sort of green stuck in them. So this week we're going to address what do you do when it just doesn't look right. I hate airbrushing. I really hate airbrushing. I just I clog it all the time. I'm not good. Anyway, when I tell you you need to airbrush this, it's the easiest way. You could dry brush it. It won't take you forever to do a large layout, but it'll, it'll work. But really an airbrush is so much easier. So first stage is to put on a sort of a base greeny grass that ties the two together. And then we're gonna go through and highlight it. So I picked up a green. This is Intermediate Green by Vallejo. It's a nice green. It kind of matches my back green a bit better. And I'm gonna put it in the airbrush. And I'm gonna see how it goes. So, wish me luck on the airbrush. I just, yeah, wish me luck. Um, right, so, airbrush. I've got it in the cleaner here. Oops, because I think that'll be easier. Um, normally I have it in a big stand downstairs. And you can see I'm, some of these need a bit of a, so, first in is um, it's three, two, one paint thinner flow improver. So first in is going to be um, ten drops. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of I don't know twenty of this thinner. One, ooh, eight, nine, ten. So that's twenty drops of thinner. Um, 10 drops of flow improver. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oops. Yeah, I can count. I'm an accountant, can you tell? And then this intermediate green by Vallejo. Now give it a good shake. And I have to say, one of the reasons I hate airbrushing is it clogs a lot. And I've struggled a lot with using the right thinners. So now for Tamiya, I use Tamiya thinners. And if, I have to say the lacquer thinners are really good, but you have to ship them from somewhere distant and they're, they're quite difficult to get hold of, certainly in the UK, and they're quite difficult to ship. Um, so at Vallejo I use a lot, and it's, um, I'm using the Vallejo, yeah, the Vallejo actual thinner and flow improver. And Martin Welberg was very helpful in helping me with this. So one, two, three, four, five, 28, 29, 30. Excellent. And then I've just got a brush that I keep for this and I just mix it all up. Now this is very thin. Um, so I had this whole airbrush apart a couple of days ago and sonicked it. So I'm hoping <laughs> every time I lean on the um, front of my layout, Along here, there's some just scatter through one with a little bit of glue. And I keep knocking it off and I just see this curtain of them, green scatter coming down. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna put not necessarily full umph out. You can see the greens coming out now. Do we like the green? 100% sold on the green. green on and battery died so I just thought batteries I'm going to take the opportunity to just put a little bit of golden olive in it's just a little bit too green 
So now we need to highlight this and for that I'm just going to use the golden olive on its own and um, I could go a little bit lighter but it's going to be quite thin it's just going to sit on the surface and I'm just going to go through now that these look more tied and um, just put this as a top coat across. I don't want it everywhere so I'm just going to kind of try and catch the tops just to try and sort of, and I've tied it into the existing bits so it's not too bad. I'm not putting a lot out with my there we go. No, I don't want it to be too clumpy, but I just want to put a bit of life back in because it looks a bit dead now. So I'm not painting everything, I'm putting variety in. But now at least all my colours are beginning to tie together. So there we are done. Just a few sprays of a nice green over the top, not as a spray gun but more as an airbrush drawing with little lines and little squiggles and you'll get that variety that you're looking for and it'll match to other places in your um, layout, diorama, whatever. Now the other time you might choose to use this is on some static grass you do get quite a gloss on them actually and you can always spray a matte varnish or a paint over the top just to knock back that gloss. On to the last thing we need to just, um, well there's been some overspray of the paint onto the ground cover, we just need to patch that up a little bit. So, starting off I've got some grout, this is just plain black tar grout and a brush. And I'm just going to go along and put it into the areas around the edge of the grass. And it doesn't need to be a lot, um, you can just push it in and it will just, um, it won't sit onto the grass. Um, or the grass will poke out of it is what I mean. And I just find it's a really good way to just bring back in the um, areas that have got a bit sort of gong yucky. Now it's worth saying about the colour of this grass. I did have someone write me an email to say it was the wrong colour. Um, don't you love people that write and tell you that it's the wrong colour? And he said it was too green for the summer in New England. And that might be the case normally, but this is based on when I went in 2009 and the year was unseasonably cold. It always seems to be that way when you go abroad, um, but it was unseasonably cold and we ended up with um, coats. We had to go and borrow a coat off a few people because it was freezing. We weren't expecting that. You know, when you're British and you go abroad, you want sunshine because you don't get it at home very often. So we, um, we I took loads of photos and this is based very much on the photos that I had of that period. So that's July 2009. And all the grass was beautifully green. Absolutely just beautifully verdant and green. So that's what I'm going for. That's the look. And if it isn't right, I'll just run my train slightly earlier in the year. But I like my grass to be bright. And I understand that this is a yard, so it may not be that bright. So in some instances, I've left a little bit of the yellow around the edge and when I get to the final amount, I might go back and put a little bit of yellow on some of them. Um, but in the meanwhile, I'm going with green. Then all you need to do is get some water mixed with isopropyl alcohol. Now, you could use fairy liquid or some other washing up liquid. Instead, it's just something to get rid of the surface tension. I use 99% isopropyl alcohol that I buy online. I believe it's called rubbing alcohol. It's about 75% proof in the US. And I did have a bottle of that once and it's fine. I'm just using it in a dripper bottle. You can use it in a spray bottle. It's whatever you have to hand and this is what I had up my loft. And I just literally just run it along and you can see it just sinks in. And I'm not that fussed about putting any glue on because I know that my glue is just going to, um, it's not going to need it along here because this isn't going to get any whatsoever sort of usage. Um, no one's going to touch it. It's right at the back of the layout. So I don't see the point in um, worrying too much about it. In fact, sometimes I literally just put it on without um, even worrying about gluing it down. But of course when you hoover it, but it's a little bit like a pastel um, if you think this, this tile grout. So, I'm just putting it on a bit to just sink it in. Sometimes if your underneath surface is a bit shiny, you might find that some of your um, sort of grout um, sort of washes off if you're too vicious. But anyway, here we go. Um, just a little bit on, not a huge amount. 
There we go. And when that's dry, I'll take the final photos and we'll be done. OK, so that's it. It's as easy as that just to spray paint your grass. And actually, I think some diorama modelists, especially in the military world, they automatically spray paint their grass. So it's not an unusual technique. You really need it in my instance where your grass wasn't tying, where I had the grass mats and the other grass. But sometimes you just find that you can't get the colour you want or it's just a bit shiny. If there's any reason, just whip out that airbrush, get it out there and just don't be afraid to paint your grass. You can't go wrong with it. Because if it looks bad, just put another coat on. So here's the final result. A little bit croaky today as I write this up, so sorry for that. Um, but as you can see, it just ties together so much better than it did at the beginning. The green all merges in, it merges with my background green, and in some places it ties through to the green where it goes a little bit yellow around the corner. What you can see is that in some places where I haven't gone over the overspray yet, you can see what happens if you don't. You get this kind of green sludge on your, gra on your ground and you need to get past that. But definitely a vast improvement. In the edges where they just come onto the yard, I left a little bit of that yellow colour, just because then, you know, that bit would be quite damaged and probably not growing as verdantly as the rest. She might start dancing again, but this is a river. I don't know. Maybe it gets a bit dusty occasionally and she knows how to clean it, but yeah, I think I like it. A bit of water. I love the waterfall in the back. Here we go. Yeah. Now, this is going to be a river too. Bit of a forced perspective. It goes around the corner and becomes like an inch wide and less. Okay. And here's another one. This is also going to be a river. Yeah. As you can see, she likes her water. And I do think there may well be. Wait for it. Yes. This is going to be a canal with a coffee dam. And there's another bit of canal that goes around there. And, uh, oh, last bit. There's going to be a river running down, or a stream running down here, through here. And then, yep, this is going to be a river. Wow, a lot of water plant. She's got to really like that water, hasn't she?